Now joining us is CEO of Carnival, Arnold Donald. Arnold, great to have you on the show today. Help us understand what was really behind the growth that you saw in earnings this quarter. Uh, yeah, we had a great quarter. Um, we uh, are up 36% over the same quarter last year, and we're able to raise our guidance for the full year. And what's behind it is just continued creation of demand for cruising by our nine Worlding Cruise Line brands, and um, people having a great time on board ships, and we're able to fill the ships at higher prices and giving people more of what they want when they're on board. You saw strong growth in Asia, Europe, but continued weakness in the Caribbean. Can you help us understand what's behind the weakness there? Is it just the recovery efforts when it, when it relates to the hurricanes, or is there something else going on? You know, actually, Seema, there was not weakness in the Caribbean. Um, the Caribbean has been very strong for us. Uh, it was very strong in the quarter, and, and um, as we look at guidance, we see it strong for the full year. So, in fact, uh, the Western Caribbean has a lot of additional capacity. We're up on yields and occupancy there. The East of Caribbean, we're seeing a little hurricane malaise as some people are still confused about what's going on in San Juan. San Juan in particular um, has been a, a little softer, but it's still very strong. And so um, we just know as people continue to sail, there are people having a great time in San Juan. It's open for business, the entire Caribbean is. And uh, anybody waiting, hoping they're gonna get you know, better pricing down the road to go to San Juan or those Eastern Caribbean itineraries are probably going to be out of luck because uh, things are going really well and people are having a great time. So Eastern Caribbean is where we're seeing some softness. When do you expect that to improve? Again, uh, the softness coming is a relative base. We had record years last year in, in Eastern Caribbean. And, um, and so we don't expect there to be weakness. Um, as we see it, there's strength. And uh, there are many years when, because of how we manage our revenue curves, uh, you could be up in occupancy or down in price, a little vice versa, and that's just managing revenue over the length of the year. But the bottom line is we see strength in the Caribbean. San Juan, uh, some people have been concerned because of the hurricane uh, malaise right. hangover. But uh, outside of that, it looks great. And San Juan is fine. We have a lot of people going to San Juan. The ships are full. They're coming back excited and happy, haven't had a great time. If you cruise the San Juan, there's plenty to do. It's comfortable. And you'll be helping the people in Puerto Rico because um, cruise is obviously part of the economic multiplier that's going to help the island you know, get back to full speed. Uh, Arnold, Carnival is such a diverse and global firm. I want to talk to you about trade and tariffs, which, as you know, has been front and center in the news. The potential retaliation from countries like China, which is a key market for you at, at Carnival. Does the onset of tariffs worry you? Um, you know, there's always tariffs and non-tariff barriers to trade discussions and activity around the world. We are global. Um, we could be impacted in any one location by, you know, particular macroeconomic factors like tariffs or non-tariff barriers to trade. But overall, we don't see a major impact on our business. Uh, we aren't fully up to speed to what the retaliations might be or what additional you know, measures might be taken. But for us, China is someday going to be the largest cruise market in the world. Uh, today, we have a number of ships sailing there. Our first quarter in China this year is up over last year, and that's against a tough comparison to the first quarter last year. Uh, because that was pre-Korea impact. And so uh, we have more capacity this year in the first quarter. The rest of the year, capacity is going to be down somewhat. So we're optimistic about China in the short term and especially optimistic about it in the long term. But the latest data from the Commerce Department shows a decline in inbound travel into the United States. If this trade war or conflict escalates, do you think that could have a negative impact on U.S. tourism? Well, what I would say is, anything that restricts travel is obviously for us not a positive thing. I don't think it's positive you know, for the world at large. I think um, people travel and when they travel they get to meet others and they get to know people as people. They discover what's common and they learn to celebrate the differences rather than to fear them. So we think travel is good for quality of life on the planet and obviously it's good for our business. I think the tariffs and those things again can have short-term ramifications Right now, we're a relatively small industry. All the cabins in the world added up, add up to less than 2% of the hotel rooms in the world. And so those kind of macroeconomic indicators often don't directly impact our business. 
you know, Carnival relies on strategic marketing and uh, advertising initiatives to get the word out about the new ships you have coming to market, as well as new programs. This Facebook story, of course, has been getting a lot of attention, misuse of customer data. Uh, based on what you've learned this week around Facebook and Cambridge Analytica, do you think Carnival will stop advertising on Facebook? Well, I'm not fully up to speed. We do have to learn more about exactly what took place and what went on. Obviously, um, we take uh, guest privacy very seriously. Uh, we respect our guest privacy and we make certain any information we have, they want us to have, and any information we share, even across our brands, uh, that you know, our guests are okay with us sharing that information. So we'll have to study carefully what transpired with Facebook and understand the details and after that we'll make whatever decisions seem to be appropriate. Are you, con are you currently conducting talks with Facebook to get a better understanding if data, uh, Carnival guest data has been misused and the impact that could potentially have on your company? Uh, both our privacy people um, involved in our information technology area and our marketing areas as well as our digital marketing teams you know, are all examining the situation and I expect to um, you know, get a uh, kind of consolidated report and recommendation from them in, in due course. You know, Arnold, there's been a lot of talk about new legislation out of Bermuda that essentially bans same-sex couples from attaining, obtaining a legal marriage license on, a board, on board a cruise ship. Um, is Carnival doing anything to fight this? You know, for us, uh, we have to comply, obviously, with regulations wherever we go in the world. And there's all types of rules and regulations all around the world, a lot of different cultures, a lot of different standards for behavior and what's acceptable and what not acceptable. But as a guest, as we sail to these places, we have to respect you know, whatever uh, they set up as standards. Uh, the situation in Bermuda is especially difficult because it feels like a retrenchment. You know, something was in place that they're now taking away. And so we'll, we take our guests where they want to go. And if we discover that people, because of that, don't want to go to Bermuda, then obviously we wouldn't be going there. Um, right. But if guests want to go, we take them. And then, you know, we have to comply with the regulations, wherever those regulations are. Um, our particular, you know, opinion about things is obviously we believe in civil rights for everyone. And um, we, clearly we think that that is a right. Um, but we don't set the laws, you know, we can input like any citizens, corporate citizens, individual citizens can, but we don't make the laws, but we do have to abide by them. Finally, aggressive expansion in 2018, four new ships coming online. There is some concern from analysts that this aggressive expansion will hurt longer term profitability. What are your thoughts? Well, again, our industry, we're blessed because we have large addressable markets everywhere in the world that are underpenetrated. In our case, also, a cruise is not just a cruise. Every brand, even the, our nine brands, are all very different from each other, and they cater to different psychographic segments. So you have a relatively low penetration with very differentiated offerings. So capacity unto itself is not a problem. It's not a bad thing. In our case, we're committed to moderate capacity growth, measured capacity growth. We want to create demand in excess of that growth, so we can capture more of the discount that exists between land-based vacations um, and, and crews. So we, we are at a discount to the equivalent land-based vacation. So we have room to move on price. And we want to be able to capture that by creating more demand you know, above the capacity we have. We see opportunity for capacity growth everywhere in the world. Um, but we, in our case, we're focused on measured capacity growth with our brands. Arnold, we're going to leave the conversation there, but thank you for sitting down with us today. Arnold Donald, CEO of Carnival. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.